on Mesmer. Let's see, what have we got here? So the, the big stuff here is Chronomancer. Um, and uh, I actually, I'll... I'll I'll actually start by saying that Arena have actually followed up here. There was a post by Grouch where he actually specifically mentioned that they know that the big issue with Chrono now is that it doesn't do enough damage to be competitive with um, other with other builds. And you, you know what, actually? In a lot of ways, I think that is the main issue. Like, Chrono has really nice utility, because it's Mesmer. Mesmer has really good utility. Like, you have the stability mantra. You have Well of Precog for Aegis. You can actually do Aegis and stability, right? You can do some cleansing. You can do, um, you have amazing utility, right? With Moa, with a focus pull, right? Um, you have great CC a lot of the time. You know, you can tank really well if you're running shield and they clearly want you to run shield here because they, you know, uh, applying quickness or alacrity is very linked into using shield now. If you take seize the moment, you give quickness when you use your shield. If you have stretch time, you now give alacrity when you use your shield, right? On tides of time, right? Uh, and you also give swiftness and might, which is pretty cool here, actually, by the way. And this will be really high uptime, by the way. Really, really um, high uptime here as well. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness me. Uh, this actually isn't Doomer. You, you know what? I, I think a lot of play, a lot of Chrono Mains are a little bit Doomer. I, I don't think so, actually. I, I really don't. Um, so they actually gave you some nice utility on Well of Action. So you give super speed on the final pulse. Which is actually pretty cool, if you ask me. We'll just go ahead and log over, and we'll take a look at what exactly this looks like. I don't think the Chrono changes the dog. I know a lot of Chromas don't like them, but I think this actually really sets up the the potential for this build to actually be pretty sick, in my opinion. Five seconds of super speed, and by the way, this is with Chrono Alac. You actually get decent super speed uptime with this, uh, because you have Omega Alacrity um, when you're running this build. Oh yeah, this is not how it works anymore, is it? But you guys get the picture, right? Um, you, because of how much Alacrity you have and how strong it is because of improved Alacrity, you can actually use these abilities quite often. You still have Signet of Inspiration, which is a pretty damn nice skill. You can share Aegis there as well. Uh, the the really big thing that holds um, Chrono back is that it doesn't do enough damage, and Arena have recognized this. I would expect them to increase the damage output on this build fairly significantly. They gave it some really good added quality of life by making the area of quickness 360. Absolutely huge, by the way. It makes it way better. You get, look, look at, you actually give a lot of cool boons, right? So look at this, guys. You give swiftness out, you give might out and quickness now, or alacrity um, too, if you want to, on your stretch time as well. You give alacrity there, there. Like, it's pretty good, to be honest, right? This is actually pretty damn good. Uh, and SOI is not dog. I mean, you, I think you could buff it and make it like four seconds or even five seconds of boon extension. That would be probably be too strong though, but you could maybe nudge it up a little bit more um, to make it kind of more competitive with where it used to be. You could make Chrono the boon extension class. I think that would be really sick actually. Um, you know, I'm about that. I'm into it, guys. I love the content. I love the gaming, right? We could do that. Um, but still, never underestimate Mesma, guys. Virtuoso does this really well. It's one of the reasons why Virtuoso is really strong, is because uh, it has all the Mesma goodness. Portal, Moa, right? Focus pull, right? All the Mesma goodness can also be taken on Virtuoso. And Chrono is there as well. And these changes um, definitely can nudge it in a direction, because Alacra is kind of annoying, right? At the end of the well, now it's at the start of the well, right? That's pretty nice. Now, I think what they need to do is just make Well of Calamity hit really fucking hard, right? If they make Well of Calamity just do a shit ton of damage and just absolutely blast, okay, now our Alacrity build does a bit more damage, right? And also bear in mind, there are other wells. Well of Precognition is a well. This is a great skill, by the way. People underestimate this skill so much. It's so good. Um, it really, really is. But yeah, I'd just say, give this a bit more damage. Uh, I'd maybe make Chrono Phantasma... The thing is, you want to separate DPS. You don't want to make DPS Chrono too overpowered. So you could basically make Chrono Phantasma maybe a little bit... Ah, uh, man, it's really tough, actually. It's really hard to balance. Honestly, Chrono is hard to balance, guys. Really, really hard. Because you want DPS Chrono just to do more damage. You want to buff the base damage a bit, but you don't want to make Chrono insane um, overall with, like, the power build. Although the power build, I think, deserves to be good as well. And honestly, it's not that great right now. I think you make Danger Time a little bit... 
Mm, it's tough because the problem is you can take danger time on like boon builds as well. It's like really awkward to be honest. But yeah, I think there is actually a lot of potential, right? Yeah, maybe I'd buff danger time a little bit to make the DPS option really, really strong. But the problem is that potentially makes the other option really strong as well, like the boon option too. But in general, you kind of want improved lacquer there as well. Slow up time. Yeah, and they kind of, um, you know, slow up time is a bit awkward uh, for sure. But maybe they could make it so in PvE, the slow duration is way higher. Like for example, you could make delayed reactions way better, right? Uh, and then all of a sudden, okay, now you can kind of self, you can be self-sustaining with your slow up time or just make slow a bit more common. Uh, yeah, I like that you can take any well. You know, you can take a super speed well. You can take an Aegis well and still give a lacquery. I actually think that there's a lot of design potential here. And bear in mind, Chrono usually has um, a lot of room for utility skill. You know, you can do Moa, you can do Gravel, right? You can do Mass Invis, you can do Time Warp. You can have Portal, you can do Mantra. The, there's a lot of good shit on Mesmer, right? If it does more damage, then this is pretty interesting, actually. If you can give it a little bit more juice, then yeah. There's one thing I would also like to see, and this is going to be very popular with Chrono mains. I would actually, this is going to be, um, this is going to sound like insanity, guys. But I would straight up give old Chaos Chrono back. Uh, because Mechanist and Firebrand are basically old Chaos Chrono anyway. I would flat out give old Chaos Chrono back. Um, because I think the build that actually suffers is like the tank Chrono, right? The insp Inspiration sucks, okay? Inspiration Chrono isn't good right now, and it honestly never will be because it just doesn't have boon application. Uh, it was really good when you had 10 target signet because 10 target signet was fucking crazy. Uh, but now you have, you have to take it to get like, you, 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 you have to, look, this is so depressing, man. Look, SOI, one target, right? Unless you take the trade. Oh no, that's unfortunate. Um, so I'd like to actually see the inspiration build a little bit better. So I'd probably do old Chaos Chrono uh, in PvE, to be clear, not in PvP, right? But I think that would be good. Um, I'd also maybe move Illusionary Inspiration and swap it with another trait here, maybe. Um, because I think there could be a really cool, like, heal boon build. Uh, sorry, I wasn't dog. Well, it's not dog if you have inspiration. Um, but the problem is that in, if you play Inspiration, it, it's it's kind of not that good, right? Like, Inspiration Chrono isn't that good, and I, I would like to see it buffed, right? Um, and yeah, I'd like to see th this trait maybe put it in Adept, right? Or, or just, like, rework. Rework, what, like, smush it together with one of these traits, maybe? Or something like that? Because it's just so... You, oh, man, it's such a trade-off, right? It's, like, such a horrible trade-off. I feel like you're never going to take Illusionary Inspiration. Um, I guess maybe you would, like, take a Mega Wells build. Like, all's well that ends well, and illusionary inspiration, and be like a heal well lord. But, ah, oh man, it's so cool to have SOI, you know? I really like Boon Extension. Maybe I just want everything. I, I used to play Chrono a lot, guys. You can see it's the only character I ever bothered to do beautiful fashion wars on. Okay, so that's kind of the reason why I'm a bit of a Chrono simp overall. But let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Step one, give it way more damage. And honestly, this is going to be a bit juicy. It's pretty tasty. The, the numbers here are good. The numbers are high, especially with Giga Alacrity. Um, the radius increase is awesome. It's really good. Uh, the shield change, they also kind of fix it for World Bus as well. But yeah, I like the, you know, I think they could buff the wells. They could make the wells even stronger. I think what could be really interesting, actually, is if they made the super speed pulsing on well of action. So instead of having to be in the well at the end, you just give, when you use it, you actively give super speed to people. That could be pretty cool, actually, um, as opposed to it being at the end, which kind of... Uh, so reworking the wells a bit more would be pretty good. But in general, more damage. And this is a very interesting build, I think. Virtuoso, by the way, still really strong. Condi Virtuoso, it's very good. Um, so don't worry about that. That's how it is. All right, then. So, Necromancer. There are some kind of weird changes here. They, I mean, it, we've kind of seen how this plays out now, and honestly, they're pretty like, eh, eh, changes. Harbinger is still amazing in PvP, despite some slight nerfs to it with Elixir of Ambition and Cross of Poison Guard. They probably didn't go far. They also didn't target the right thing here. Um, like, they, they, they should, in my opinion, the really problematic thing with Harbinger in PvP is that it gives AoE quickness. Right? That's my issue um, with it. I've got a big problem with that. Um, I, 
I don't know how you fix it. Like, ultimately, I think they have to redesign Harbin. And there, uh, uh, it's just so problematic, man. Like, Harbinger is like, ooh, ooh, really hard to fix this. Like, in, in PvP, the AoE quickness is super oppressive, in my opinion. Um, it just makes stuff like Willbender even more cracked than it already is. In general, high quickness uptime in PvP I don't think is healthy, right? It's already hard enough to react to, like, the crazy shit that's going on. And these changes, they do nerf it. CPC is overpowered for a long time, right, for sure. Um, the Elite Elixir, what is overpowered, right? It's still an insane skill, right? You're not dropping this ever, right? Uh, but... Yeah. Wait, did they... Re yeah, they oh, dude, if Ward if I was AoEs, that would be pretty sick, actually. But, yeah, I think Harbinger needs to be reworked a bit. They should change the way it gives quickness a bit, um, I think. Because it's just not healthy with PvP. In PvE, the quickness build is still very underwhelming, too. There's actually a lot of room to make it better, um, as well, by the way. Uh, because quickness in PvE, you you just kind of lack utility. You can do Might, Swiftness, and Quickness and Fury. That's okay, right? That's all right. But... It needs something else, right? Like, it needs to either do way more damage than Firebrand, which it doesn't, by the way, um, or it needs to have equivalent utility, right? And and you don't really have that, to be honest, right? You, you're, you're very meh. It's a very middle... It's not a bad build, right? Quickness Harbinger. It's just a very middle-of-the-road build. Yeah, it, you know, maybe it could have some stability in PvE, or maybe it could just do more damage. I think it's fine to do more damage, right? Like, if it, if it just benched more than, like, way more than Quickness Firebrand, I think that's fine, right? Um, nothing wrong with that. How much does it actually do right now? Let's, let's go and have a look at how much, um, DPS it actually does, but it, it's, it's not that great. It's not that great, guys. Um, so yeah, needs a bit of work in my opinion. Uh, the Blood Bank change, it's still, like, kind of crazy in, in, <laughs> like, really tanky Reaper builds in World Bust World, but honestly, not a super significant thing there as well. Death Perception. Uh, they should probably split this in PvE just to give it another 15% crit. This should probably be 25% crit chance in PvE. Because you just don't crit cap. I mean, it actually does still work out to a buff, by the way, I believe. Um, on Death Perception, this is actually because of the the way this 15% modifier works. It kind of modifies all crit damage. Not more, It's not more frosty. It modifies your crits by 15%, which is better than 15% crit damage, right? Because that's, that's how mass works. Um, but it still doesn't crit cap. And also, Reaper is not exactly like Giga OP. In general, a lot of power builds. I mean, I kind of forgot to mention this with Dragon Hunter as well. But in general, a lot of like the old school power builds, they've really fallen behind, okay? Particularly the melee ones. I think stuff like Reaper, DH, and Hollow definitely need a bit of a look, right? To be made better in some way. To just do more damage, right? They're just a little bit, just weak, right? Uh, not enough DPS. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. You you, it, you just get punished. I mean, it's also a less interesting trait, you know? Um, it's not a very exciting trait, guys. I think what they could do here with Reaper, by the way, and this would be really cool. I would like to see them move Decimate Defenses I, I'm not... I'd have to really think about this for PvP, actually. This might scuff PvP. I don't think it would, though. Um, they should move Decimate Defenses to the Adept line, so you could take it and Soul Eater. So you could have Decimate Defenses, Soul Eater, and then the extra Ferocity, right? That would actually be really cool. Because now, you'd crit cap really easily because of Reaper, okay? Which is cool, because Reaper's the power spec, right? And you get your 10% damage modifier and lifesteal, and you get your extra Ferocity, Right, as well. I think that makes some sense there. Because right now, you wouldn't really care too much about, like, the explosion trait. Like, the chill explosion trait. It's like a DPS increase, obviously, but not the end of the world. You do want chill uptime, of course, on Reaper. But you kind of have that in PvE anyway, right? Like, there's loads of chill spam about the place, no matter what you're up to. Um, that would actually be a... That would be the, the way to go, right? That would be pretty damn... A, a more interesting direction to take this, I think. They also, like, randomly... They just some, like, pretty minor changes here. This is nice for heal necro. Like, definitely take this trait on heal necro. Banshee's well. Very strong ability. Uh, but yeah. There you go. It's good. You res even faster now. Wow. And you get more healing, so your transfusion heals more. Heal Scourge, honestly, is a little bit clumsy to fit into most comps. You're typically going to play it almost as like a hybrid DPS on the hybrid build, or just as a third healer, as a carry. There's a bit more of a trade-off to it now. It's still a very strong build, though, right? Um, it's not a bad build whatsoever. You still play it. It's good. It's actually a bit better now, because Locust Swarm does more AoE healing, too, which is pretty cool, so you just heal a little bit more. I think, you know, 
They could maybe give, if they wanted to make a support Scourge, which I think they probably do, they could maybe give some boons to Scourge. I, you know, my idea has always been reworking Sansavant. So Sansavant gives, it makes your shades no longer do any damage, basically, but only give boons instead and supportive abilities. That would actually be pretty cool. Um, so they could maybe rework Scourge, but it's a bit clumsy to fit in Heal Scourge. Just use it in an emergency, right? Like in an emergency to hard carry people with like the Omega Giga Barrier build. It's very strong. It's just that it's a bit harder to fit into your comp than it used to be in the 10 target boon meta. But yeah. And Reaper also got buffed in PvP as well. I, I don't think this is enough to make Reaper good in PvP. It really struggles in the current meta. Like it, it's, it kind of gets hard countered by like every single build. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of Reapers um, in high level play, to be honest. But, it, you know, it's good to see that they're, you know, making it a little bit better. But I don't really see this being enough, to be honest. Um, the Elite skill is pretty sick. If you play the Elite skill with the cooldown reduction trait on Reaper, you're going to be spamming Chilled to the Bone, which is pretty nice. But, eh, nah, you, you're not running this. In World vs. World, you kind of already ran uh, Reaper a lot of the time. It was a very good build, particularly in smaller scale fights. Um, so, yeah, you, you wouldn't really run Great Sword too much, to be honest, on, on Reaper. But, you know... This is kind of nice, right? It's like a good AoE boon removal ability here with Nightfall. Not too bad uh, in that regard there. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff indeed. And, you know, I like to see a bit of variety, right? I think the World vs. World meta in particular is something I really want to um, get shaken up, right? I want to see it get shaken up. Let's go. Let's go big. Let's bring that content. Yeah, the Shout Heal is insane, right? Like, this is... um. It's a lot of healing in PvP, right? Um, and loads of life force too. Like, and with traits, that's actually crazy. It's a lot of life force generation, which is something that Reaper does struggle with a little bit. And also, it's going to be a lot of healing. So, this is definitely one to watch out for, and will definitely make Reaper better for like ranked gameplay. But I think it's going to really struggle there. And honestly, you, you ha with Reaper and with Necro, you have to compete with really good heal skills anyway, right? Um, you have to compete with. Um, consume conditions which is very strong yeah i'd like to see some like big buffs in pve it could almost be like a interesting support build right like or it has a bit more utility right i think adding more utility to reaper could be really sick it already is this kind of like slightly tankier slightly higher like cleave more independent build kind of really leaning into that in pve could make it a really sick build i think um but just also it probably needs a bit more damage too because obviously it's a power build and power builds it kind of got they kind of got the shaft, you know, a little bit. They got a, they got a little bit memed, just a touch, by the recent changes with all the banners and stuff like that. Because no unique modifiers anymore, and unique modifiers, they were pretty good on power builds because that's actually how power builds in general work. Okay, Ranger. Let's talk about Ranger gamers. So Druid, I, I actually um, kind of underestimated this a little bit in my initial review. I think Druid actually comes out super well um, after these changes. Druid, it's a bit bugged right now because the spirits actually pulse boons around the druid, not around you. But when they fix that, this is actually very tasty, um, to be honest. Like, this is not bad. I think the durations are actually a little bit low. The The big issue I have with these is that they assume you're going to be 100% boon duration to get uptime. I think they should maybe make it one and a half seconds base instead of one second, because that means with traded, you're going to overcap a little bit. And gamers, I hate to break it to you, but Firebrand and Mech, they overcap really, really hard, right? Not good. Now, you can definitely complain that spirits are very boring and they just pulse boons and they're very passive. And that's a fair criticism. But outside of a rework to spirits, that's not going to change. And what I want to talk about is actually just like, is it good? Is it good or not? And honestly, yes, actually. Um, this is good. It is good. Druid has great utility. You don't care about Frost Spirit anymore, bear in mind, because it doesn't have the 5% mod. So you can just do Sun and Stone and then take it. Oh, this change by it's actually insane. Like, Glyph of Unity is so good. You heal so... It triggers a regen. It's actually so strong. Um, now, like, your uh, burst healing, your, like, burst sustained healing with this ability is so good. Um, particularly if you trait it because you have a lower cooldown, right? This is so strong because um, you just heal a lot when you pulse it with this and you can obviously take glyph of the tides right you can do all this crazy stuff with utility actually um i actually think that druid is super happy about this patch you give it alacrity and now your boon suite is perma regen perma vigor perma prot perma fury perma might perma alacrity and you can be at range while doing that right you can be you can range heal people with Celestial Avatar, awesome, really fucking good. That's really nice, huh? Right? Um, you can uh, have great CC, 
You can adapt with your longbow. Um, you can, you know, you can block projectiles with staff. You can push things. You can immobilize things with entangle. You have a great revival skill as well um, with this too. I mean, Druid is super happy, honestly, with this. Like, um, if you're a Druid main in PvE, you're loving life right now because this definitely makes it really strong. Um, you know, it really does. Like, you're pretty juicy here, you know? Uh, but yeah, spirits are kind of boring. I, I I guess they could, yeah, like, spamming the spirit abilities is a bit irritating. You have to interrupt your shit. But, I mean, I oh, don't know, it, it's whatever. It, it's a good build, right? Uh, and you know what's super interesting, actually, as well? Grace of the Land got nerfed, kind of for no reason, not gonna lie. Good troll there, uh, Arena, pointless nerf. Because um, you, you're gonna cap pretty easily with, like, Warhorn anyway. I guess maybe you have more of a trade-off when you take Longbow, I guess. Um, but it's, it's not the end of the world. Um... What's super interesting is that I feel like you can almost get away with Lingering Light because there's so much might spam now in the meta that the healer isn't actually dependent on applying 25 might because, you know, your Firebrand applies might, you know, your Scrappers are applying might, uh, you know, DPS mechs are applying might, Chronos are applying might, right? Like, everyone's spamming might, right, these days. Um, so in, in a lot of group comps, you can probably get away with just saying, you know what, I want even more healing. I want 20% more healing. And 10% when we leave as well, making your region ticks even more insane. Like, um, there's definitely some groups where you'll be able to get away with that and adapt your build and just make it really, really strong. It's just not bad. It's honestly not bad at all, actually, uh, with this stuff. Yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll get to the Solby stuff a little bit later. Spotter, it's a boring thing. Now, honestly, this trait is, like, legitimate garbage now, I feel like. Um, why would you ever take this? Uh, I guess if you desperately needed Fury, maybe if you're playing like a power soul beast, but you're never going to drop that for like the bleed jam, you know, you're never going to drop the bleed damage trait if you're playing Condi, right? Um, and yeah, th this is just terrible trait now. Not good. Um, it, yeah, you don't need Fury on Ranger a lot of the time. They gave uh, Soul Beast a bit more damage here as well. And Soul Beast kind of got nuked with the leader of the pack and the one wolf pack nerf. And before we actually get to the result of this nerf, actually, but yeah. Uh, here's the deal. So, leader of the pack and one wolf pack, they were very skill-oriented things. You would use it, you would time it, right? You'd go, oh, okay, we're bursting now, everyone's gonna use this. I also, and I don't like, and they reduced that, they made it worse, to reduce the skill cap, which I think sucks. I don't like reducing skill cap. Fucking lame. Um, and that's exactly what they've done here. But honestly, I also don't like the design on how they, they change it as well. Because now, if you have a build that attacks really fast, you don't have that synergy, right? And I think that's so lame. I love stuff like, oh shit, this skill works really well if you attack really fast. I love the weird stuff, like King of Fires in Berserker, right? Uh, making it so that when you, um, when you do like a, a fire aura, it explodes and does fire damage. Like stuff like that, I think is really cool. It's such a fun trait, like a really interactive trait. Not overpowered, but niche and interactive, right? And I feel like that this kind of nerfing this kind of stuff is really unfun. I'd much rather they just reduce the damage on it, but keep the interval there. So you have this kind of cool synergy or even remove the interval, but nerf the damage really hard. So it's really, really good on fast attacking builds, but not that good on slower attacking builds. I'm not a big fan of this design here overall. Now, the good news for Ranger mains is that Soul Beast is actually insane uh, right now, or really strong, because they actually buff basically a lot of Ranger weapons. Uh, specifically, Axe did really well here. Split Blade and Ricochet and Winter's Bite got massively buffed. So, even though Soul Beast got deleted, or really hard nerfed by this, it actually came back almost immediately with this hotfix, and now Axe Axe uh, Longbow Soul Beast is a really excellent build. Uh, very high DPS. So, yeah, good news for you there. And obviously, these other builds are also quite competitive. You need to just, like, just if you just randomly want to use a greatsword, then good news, you do a bit more damage as well. I kind of like this, actually. I, I like the fact that they're making um, kind of shitty weapons or less used weapons in PvE better. I'm I'm about that. I absolutely am. I spoke about this a little bit before, but I kind of like buffing auto attacks, um, and but keeping the skill cap high, right? I like keeping stuff like um, Signet Share and One Wolf Pack in the game, so you get rewarded for using it. But I also am a really big fan of making the game easier to play overall by making auto attacks a little bit better. Uh, just in general. And yeah, I guess you just don't play skirmishing so much anymore, right? On Druid. You just play stuff like Marksmanship. Which is really nice, by the way. Because then you have the Perma Days trait. Right? Like, if we just log... Oh, I'm dead! Oh, no! If I go ahead and log over to my Ranger here, um, you can maybe have a look at what a Druid build uh, might end up looking like, right? Now, of course, if you do drop Skirmishing, then you don't have Quick Draw. Uh, but that's honestly not the end of the world. Like, Quick Draw is good. Um, 100%. But honestly... Um, you know, you can kind of adapt your build here. Like, having 50% extra CC 
That's pretty goddamn nice. Having a free Clarion Bond is really good. This is just like free Might Fury um, uptime there as well. Very, very tasty indeed. You absolutely love to see that. It's fantastic stuff. Um, this uh, Druid? Druid is kind of back, you know. Druid is back in the mix. It's back on the menu, gamers. And obviously, you don't care too much about Frost Spirit. So you have a very flexible utility skill. You could do Glyph of Unity. You could do, um, you know, Muddy Terrain, right? You could do Glyph of the Tides, right? There's a lot of variety and a lot of possibilities now uh, with this Druid setup that can be various. You could do Protect Me, right, for an AoE stun break, right? And you don't really give up anything for that. You still have all of your boon up time. Because your Might is going to be covered by just, like, spamming stuff and just having your... um. You know, just using like stuff like this, right? Like having a uh, call of the world, having your clarion bond, right? All this kind of stuff. It's just free value, insane free value. Nature magic top, yeah. And you just have alacrity like all the time. Like the it's it's is a little bit awkward, I guess, um, because you know you're gonna have to kind of be around where the spirits are, which kind of sucks. But you know, and you've got to spam all the cast with that. But you can see, right? You know, boon up time is very tasty. I think I haven't got quite a hundred percent duration on this build. Yeah, I'm ninety five percent, so it will kind of not be permanent. And I think I'd probably nudge the uptime here a little bit because again, other specs like Firebrand and Mech don't suffer from this problem. But it is very passive. And again, the really good thing about this is that if you go over here, well. Actually, not right now, as you can see, it's actually a little bit bug. You can see it's pulsing around me. But when they actually fix this, um, this is really nice because it means that I can um, kind of be doing my thing over here. And they're still been So I can be out doing a mechanic like this. Uh, and I'm still booning my team. Right now, it is bugged, so be aware of that. Uh, but when they fix that, this is really good. Being able to do this at range and still heal your team, still do your thing, is great. And never underestimate just the, honestly, godlike utility um, of Druid. It is very, very good. Very, very good indeed. So yeah, definitely a big thing for Druid mains here. And a few more changes and it's going to be very, very tasty. Another thing here is actually Untamed, by the way. Untamed has ascended to greatness. There's a 40k Condi Untamed benchmark. Pretty good. Turns out like cooldown reduction is pretty good when you CC stuff. But more importantly than that, actually, um, very, very interesting stuff, actually, is the fact that you have um, very, very tasty... Um, what am I saying here? My language, my words, my words have gone. My words have escaped me. Um, you can give alacrity now on Soul Beast too. There are actually alacrity Soul Beast builds. And this is where I have to be a little bit critical here. I do think that giving, um, giving boons baseline to professions, the, the, the alacrity and quickness baseline is a little bit spooky, to be honest. I think this is a potential balance um, nightmare down the line. It's, I think it will be worse if it was quickness, but more on that later, of course. Um, but I do think you have to be super careful with this, um, because it does mean that, that any ranger spec can give these boons with nature magic. It is a fairly big investment to take this, but I actually really like that Untamed not only has a good DPS option, but also has access to boon options as well. I'd almost like to see them lean into it a little bit more, actually, um, and give Untamed some more support options. Um, and some more traits, like rework some of the traits to make it a bit more supportive somehow. And to have options to give stuff to allies, right? And kind of be that, almost like a catalyst, right? Very brawlery, right? This kind of nature magic wielding semi-support DPS build. I think it'd actually be really cool um, if they uh, lent into that a little bit more. But, you know, giving alacrity is pretty good. Is it a build you're going to see very commonly uh, right now? Absolutely not. I think it's a little bit too niche. Um, but is it actually a potentially good build down the line? Actually, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's also a really crazy build to play because you spam insanely hard because of uh, Fervent Force. Arguably a very badly designed trait, but kind of a fun trait to use. You can spam like an absolute lunatic, a lot like Condi Willbender. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's 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 a build. It exists. And honestly, this level of Condi um, uh, cooldown reduction means that all if, if Untamed ever got a lot of utility, it'll be able to use the utility a lot, right? Because of the cooldown reduction, which is pretty cool, actually. Interesting stuff, guys. Very interesting stuff there as well for the Untamed. And some Druid buffs in PvP. Is it good? No. Okay, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I feel a little bit bad for saying that. I know there's a lot of people like, oh, I want to play Druid in PvP, Pog. I want to play my Druid, Poggers. But get out of here with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 